From the far out free love and 60s to the groove and disco of the 70s, even the big hair 80s, 1240 The Brew plays only classic hits. 1240 KOKL, Okmulgee, Oklahoma. SJ, welcome to Muskogee Radio, your weekly source for tribal and community news, interesting guests and discussions, plus a local events calendar. Stongo, Gary Five, Jaho Jifgeros, Muskogee Radio, Welcome to our program on this beautiful Oak Mongi morning here. Got a few things lined up for you, we'll be sharing. Uh, we've got a brand new addition to the economic community, artistic community of downtown Oak Mulgee. The Red Stick Gallery had its grand opening last week. We'll be speaking with uh, Chris Asbill, wearing several hats there, about the gallery, what does it mean to uh, Creek Nation, to its artists, and to the downtown community and the changes that are going on down there. Uh, in the second part of that interview, we will be actually talking to one of my kinfolk, Sandy Fife Wilson. She is uh, known for her gorgeous textile work, uh, her weavings, belts, and bags, just beautiful. Uh, and what does it mean for uh, a gallery like this to open up in Okmulgee and provide another opportunity? We'll be speaking with her, and then uh, later on in our program, our good old buddy Darren DeLong will be showing up, and he's bringing along an artist we've actually heard before, George Alexander, to talk about some of the work he's doing these days, and uh, we'll catch up on, on that. With any luck, maybe we'll get Chris to uh, drop back by uh, and uh, give us an update on the splash pad. A uh, hugely popular item uh, when it opened up with little kids just having a great time. And we're hoping to see it um, uh, sprinkling water again before the uh, festival starts. So we'll find out uh, you know, what's the story there. But first of all, let's uh, start off with our recorded interview. Uh, done last week at the Red Stick Gallery with Mr. Chris Asbill and later on Sandy Fife Wilson. Uh, first question then, is this a tribal enterprise? Yes, it would be a tribal enterprise and, and basically the idea is to long term is when we have our visitor center uh, open uh, on the north side of uh, the council house, we wanted to uh, have a gift shop in that. So we want to get the gift shop going early and, and get our feet wet, and this, when, when that gets ready to open, we'll be we'll be ready to go. So it's kind of a coordinated effort, then. It is, and you know the Red Stick Gallery is um, has been around Altmulgee for years and years and years. It was originally inside the council house when the uh, CIMA ran the council house, so the name itself everybody knows, very familiar with it, and uh, people are extremely excited about having the Red Stick Gallery back. So. Well, let's uh, pause there at. Uh, at the name for a second. That's very imposing, Red Stick. Most of us uh, familiar somewhat with the Muskogee history know what Red Stick means to us as a people. Uh, can you kind of let me know why, why that name was chosen? The name was chosen, uh, I guess, uh, a long time ago to you know, bring about, to honor you know, Creek heritage and uh, the, the idea of Red Stick you know, being a war and uh, the you know, we in, in more modern times we chose it because of the, his, the historical nature of it, and also the familiarity of the name itself. And uh, CIMA, you know, we've had a story past with CIMA, and or the, was newly became the Creek Council House Museum Association, but they did a lot of good for the Council House, and uh, people, you know, recognize the Red Stick Art Gallery from being inside the Council House for all those years. So that's one of the reasons we brought it back. But uh, you know, just that, that cultural identity with Red Stick and uh, the Muskogee Creek Nation goes, you know, goes on from eons. Well, that identity is, uh, I think, important uh, for the tribe's presence in Old Mulgee. It's a visible reminder uh, that the tribe is here, its culture is on display and, and is working here. Um, where, yeah, you're also a member of the uh, city council, is that correct? Right. All right, now, uh, and in, in wearing those hats, 
Uh, why is this uh, gallery, uh, its presence so important down here on the, what is the main square of Oatmulgee? Sure, so the, uh, if you look at the, the location of the, uh, the Red Stick Gallery, it's actually in, in close confines with Oatmulgee Main Street. I'm actually the president of Main Street, and uh, I went to the Main Street board and, and gave them a, a proposal that we lease this, this uh, part from them for uh, a nominal amount, which include all bills, uh, all bills paid, and it helped, it helped their bottom line, but also added to their overall mission of bringing people downtown into downtown Oatmulgee. And, you know, this is all authentic uh, Native American art, authentic Creek art, and uh, there's not a single piece in here that's made any, any, by, by anyone else than a, a true Native American, and uh, we can verify that, and we're proud to say that. Um, but it adds to the uh, cultural mecca of, that we're trying to create in downtown with the council house, the visitor center, uh, the art and gift shop, collection space, that we want to have everything in Muskogee in downtown Altmulgee, and I think that's what's going to drive the economy, the local economy, and from a city council standpoint, that's very important. Well, from that standpoint, uh, Altmulgee Rising is the effort here to promote the downtown, to make it a more kind of an artsy-friendly uh, mecca for visitors right. and local people. Uh, so it plays a part in, in that in uh, kind of developing uh, the area. Oh, definitely. So, you know, I mean, this town is kind of reinventing itself with Oatmulgee Rising. We've gone from an uh, industrial uh, complex economy to one that's really based on tourism and services. And we think that cultural tourism is something that has, has uh, it's a billion-dollar industry that needs to be tapped into, and we're doing our part. You know, eventually we're going to have uh, bus tours come from, uh, from Tulsa, from Margaritaville, River Spirit Casino, come down, hey, spend, spend the day in downtown really creating almost like a cultural mecca, a mini Santa Fe with our artists, artisans surrounding the square and, and you know, and, and people coming in and visiting the Red Stick Art Gallery as part of that. But we think that we can turn this town around from a, from a cultural tourism standpoint. Um, this question is kind of a dollars and cents type question. Now. Uh, we've seen, uh, I, at least I've seen Native art galleries kind of come and go. Uh, it's not the most intense market, right. but where and when it is, like Santa Fe, or uh, something that pops up around like Gathering of Nations or Red, Red Nation, uh, it can be. Now, um, do you see the audience out there to sustain this place and to develop that following? Well, the good thing I think that we're going to, the long term business model that we have is, is this gift shop. Is not going to be a standalone entity. It's going to be an entity within uh, the administrative space, collection space, a uh, arts and crafts space, etc. Associated with the Arlington Building, which is the building on the north side of the count of the council house. So, from a long-term business plan, it doesn't necessarily have to stand alone. It's going to be. It's going to support. Uh, it's going to support what we have uh, already established in that area, and you know, I think if if you're from a visitor standpoint. Uh, whether you go to the nation, any, any National Park Service monument or anywhere you go, there's always that associated gift shop. And whether or not they make money long term, we, we may subsidize it, but I think that's one of the things that, that you have to do. And But if we could break even, I think that's the goal. I mean, and not necessarily to make a ton of money, but just, just to have that option. And really, it's a benefit to our citizens and our artists and artisans out there who have a, a market to sell their goods and, goods and services here. The phrase marketing market is key in uh, in the success of, of this particular any business actually you got to get out there and sell your product right. uh, now recently Oklahoma had Native America on its license plates and uh, has always billed Native Americans as uh, an important part of its history and existing culture now you kind of riding on the coattails there do you expect a new effort a new direction well, it's interesting, you know, with um, the free flow of information with Facebook, social media, et cetera, you know, marketing Native, uh, Na Native America is, is um, it's fairly easy. And we actually uh, have, have a website and, and some other social media aspects that they've already been pushing. And, and we have people calling from across the country already buying, buying stuff from this store online. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, it's amazing how much people know already know about the Red Stick Gallery. And so 
you know, the brick and mortar store and in, in terms of the visitors, visitors coming in, that's one thing, but we have an online presence as well. And it's actually going to drive a lot of revenue to the, to the uh, organization. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really just, just, it's just phenomenal how many people actually already know. And we have a big order coming down next week of uh, wanting to, you know, buy, you know, authentic Creek art. Now that art is got to be a key feature of the, of the, uh, overall presence. It's not just a gift shop, not, you know, for souvenirs and things like that. But we're seeing a major uh, size artworks being displayed already. Uh, do you expect to uh, have any uh, exhibits or special uh, showings of a particular creek or native artist? Uh, is that kind of in your plans also? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically exactly what we're going to do. And so, you know, we may have a featured artist uh, for a month, and we're going to take things on consignment, things that are made at a higher price. We're going to have bows and arrows that are made. Um, we're going to have um, actually have uh, artists that may come in, and, and, you know, you can meet, meet the artists, and they can show you some of their, some of their skilled work, uh, whether it's uh, basket making or, basket making or f- finger weaving or bow making, whatever it is. You know, we're going to have a continual programmatic efforts to, so that we encourage people to come downtown and, and meet those folks and, and really – get an idea of maybe the touch part of their own personal art uh, ability to do art. There's a lot of people out there that are scared to try, and so I think we have these, these uh, renowned artists that can encourage people, particularly the youth. So uh, they have a lot of programmatic efforts that you're going to see, see coming down the pipe uh, here in downtown Alt Mulgee. Well, what about uh, some of those other artists who aren't so well-known, kind of a uh, home-baked version or a mom-and-pop kind of yeah. operation. Uh, people who do stuff like in their living rooms in their garage and in perhaps not the huge, vast inventories, but enough to perhaps, you know, pay some bills and things like that. they going to have a place here? Definitely. You know, um, all, all artists and artisans are people that maybe have, that have a hobby and they develop into um, um, you know, maybe they don't necessarily have to develop into a commercial enterprise. So we have people here that just make a few items, but they're really, really good and they're authentic, and they're proven to be true Native American art. And so, if you're sitting at home and you're wondering, I wonder if I'm good enough, or if, if they would like to have my quality work in, in the in the uh, Red Stick Gallery, come on down, bring your art, bring you know, bring some pictures. If you want to actually bring the uh, the uh, the pieces that you have. Bring it in. Uh, we may be. Uh, we can either put it on consignment, or we may buy it from you, and we'll take a look at it. But there's no one out there that we're going to preclude from uh, having access to the uh, the Red State Gallery. Uh, we'll let the consumer make a decision whether or not they want that to be something that that they want to own. But uh, yeah, if you're if you're sitting out there, you know, for you know, please come down, and contact us because we don't know everybody. I mean, we would encourage you to contact us. Now the. Uh the gallery, the, in the word itself uh, gives you a kind of a presence of uh, some class, shall we right. call it. It's not just your everyday little souvenir junkie stand. Um, will that kind of thing, uh, would you draw the line, so to speak, saying, well, we're looking for finer art pieces and, you know, the cute little doll kind of thing isn't exactly what we want? Yeah, and I think, you know, there's got to be a, a level of... of um uh, craftsmanship and quality that uh, I think that's anything uh, you know it's it's got to be quality and it's got to be craftsmanship and it's got to be something that people want and you know we'll take a look at that and you know we have to be a judge whether or not we're going to invest in, in that but we would hope that if you're a true artist and you're a true artisan that you take pride in your work and that you wouldn't necessarily want to bring something down here that would that is uh, that was kind of just thrown together most artists are they're really specific about their product, and so that really hasn't been a problem in the past. Uh, the problem in the past is people want one selling other people's arts, uh, or, uh, artwork, or, or crafts that they've done, or putting themselves out there as uh, being uh, native, and they're not actually native. Those are the problems we have. We very rarely have problems with people submitting a an item that they're calling a piece of art that's that's not very uh, not have a high quality. Now, you've got a new Oklahoma law that actually says you have to be a federally recognized enrolled right. member, right? Does that play in a part in what you do then? It is. And uh, so, you know, we abide by all the federal rules in terms of the way we market our items. Um, 
you have to be a Native American artist to you know be in the shop and um, we actually went through some issues with that with a, a few of the vendors that were trying to sell to us and we vetted them out so we um, go through a very uh, lengthy process to vet people out and make sure that they are truly a Native American and, and they are actually doing the work and so yeah it's, it's very serious and it's, it's potentially a crime if you put yourself out there so and we've uh, caught we, caught one particular person yeah it's, and it wasn't good for him so it's good to hear uh, now how, as, let me ask you a question with your you had a <laughs> council member how is the community of Oatmulgee receiving the, the idea and the presence here? Um, they say, it, is it the tribe trying to take over or, you know, muscle its way mm -hmm. in? Or do they see it as a welcome uh, component of the Oatmulgee Oat Rising campaign? So uh, I may have mentioned earlier, you know, so I'm the president of Oatmulgee Main Street this year, and I'm also on the city council. So what we've done as a community is we've all learned to embrace each other. And I think uh, it goes both ways. As the city is in our community, we're really embracing what Creek Nation brings to the community. We really embrace what OSUIT can bring to the community, Green Country, the College of Muscogee Nation, and vice versa. You know, when I, uh, uh, it wasn't just the community not embracing Creek Nation, but Creek Nation really wasn't embracing the community. It's like, we all know that if we're all pulling on that rope in the same direction, that we're getting things done. and. Recently, the city council, uh, I think this is the fourth year in a row that we sponsored the Creek Festival. Uh, it was a $15,000 uh, sponsorship, so you're looking at $60,000 that the city has given back, but it's not even about the money. It's about saying, hey guys, we support you, we're glad you're here, and you support a lot of things that we do, and it's not about the money, it's about, because you can kind of trade money back and forth. It's about, hey, we're going to support the things you're doing, and, and you're supporting the things we're doing. and the Omogi Main Street and the city has really embraced uh, the Red Stick Gallery and they understand what Creek Nation can bring to this community and I think things are going really well and I think some of those old uh, biases and discriminatory attitudes are starting to die out really. Now in your citizens gift shop there at the tribal complex in the administration right. building, is this going to compete with them? Uh, is there going to be some sort of collaboration or are you just going to kind of go your own ways? That's a good question. You know, I think uh, they have a niche uh, market. Uh, we would like, I think we would like for them uh, to continue what to do, what they're doing. Uh, I think eventually, I think it would be nice that if they would honor the standards that this Red Stick Art Gallery has in terms of being Native American art, uh, being Creek art, particularly when you're in the complex and this being Creek art, um, and just maintain those standards. And that's the key because th they get a lot of traffic, foot traffic through the, through the complex and we would never want to step on their toes, but we would like, you know, if someone asked us about them, we would, we would, you know, have their cards down here and then maybe have our cards out there and so that we can work together in co collaboration and um, uh, they serve a nice role for Creek Nation at the complex, so we would just kind of hopefully supplement what they're doing. Now, the um, future is, is happening now. We're seeing the renovations take place in the council house, and uh, work crews are busy you know, changing out uh, the uh, stuff that needs to go, and I presume soon we'll be seeing uh, replacement kind of things. Right. Um, when do you see this all kind of coming together? Will there be a, uh, a day of celebration when it all is hmm. uh, uh, put out with a fireworks show or something like that? Uh, I'll, will you launch the project all together? Yeah, so it's, um, it's been a lot of work. And, you know, the Rustic Art Gallery took a lot of work. It took a while for us, you know, to uh, get this going. The Council House Project is moving forward. I actually, when I walked in, um, Earlier, they were actually working on the cupola or the belfry. Uh, we're, if you look across the street, there's a dumpster uh, on the visitor center right now. We're actually cleaning the, the, the second story out. Uh, the architectural uh, renderings are being produced right now. So it's all coming together. And uh, we're waiting on the status of our NEH grant for, to, to do the, the programmatic development on the inside of the council house. So, excuse me, um, everything is ripe to blossom and if, if that's uh, the right terminology is uh, the fruit is 
being bared out, and we're getting really close to be able to harvest you know, our crops. And uh, it's been it's, it's making the right decisions early on, and spending the time to do that, and really uh, committing yourself to a process. And that's what we've done on these. And so when you see a good process. You see a good process on the Red Stick Art Gallery. We've seen a good process on the Council House. And you've seen a good process on the uh, Visitor Center across the street. You don't let anything deter you. And uh, no special favors, no special interests, just doing what's right, doing what's right for the nation's money and the people that we're serving. And if you do that all the time, things work out. And that's kind of what's happened. Okay, well, thank you for mentioning that Visitor Center. It's a good segue to my next set of questions. Uh, now, when that opens up, what will uh, the average visitor see when they walk in the door? So the visitor center would be like if you took a trip to Mount Mount Vernon or uh, Monticello at uh, where Jefferson's house. So you, you're going to go in. You're going to see. Uh, you'll see examples of collections. So it'll serve multiple purposes: collection space, gift shop, uh, visitor center and also administrative offices for the staff and also uh, have a uh, outdoor space on top of the building for special events and fund fundraising initiatives that the, that the tribe may have. But when you go in is you're going to have a lot of programmatic stuff about the council house. We're going to have a, we have a docent program. We've actually already developed the docent program itself. So just like the Gillies at Gilcrease, um, we'll have a, uh, they'll be there meeting people, meeting the students, meeting the, uh, uh, the bus tours and there'll be a uh, different uh, signage, et cetera, in that area. There'll be the, the visitor center there, food, all these different things. Will, and we have some sch schematic designs already on, on the, what the inside of the visitor center will look like. Well, that will house all these things. It's about a $3.5 million project. So we we're, we're actually have taken over the Muskogee Historical Cultural Foundation where we've created it, which was the old CIMA. We took it over, changed the name, created a new, new board, got our first donation from the, from the uh, uh, National Council for $10,000, and now we're actually going to be moving in, into a serious uh, capital campaign mode. So we are going to be an independent fundraising arm for this project, and we have some big donors lined up, and I'm hoping that some of, some of these things may come to fruition. What about the uh, election that was formerly housed down here that almost got you know, lost to us on the auction block? Yeah. It's been residing at the Riverwalk uh, for some time. Are those items going to find a home here? Will uh, our people be able to walk through and see this, this material again here, perhaps the council house, even in this gallery? So not in the gallery, not in the council house. Uh, the council house will be reflective of the history of the council house itself. So most of the items in there will be re recreations. We're actually actually pursuing the, uh, those products now, those items now. Uh, the collection space will be uh, across the street at the visitor center. So all the items that uh, we've uh, took from the council house and also that we, and we have a lot of, we have way more items than we've ever had even even beyond the, the what we got from the council house from the CIMA group because people we've bought stuff people have donated stuff and over time we our collections have increased pretty substantially those will be housed across the street at the Arlington building will people be able to look at those yes but it'll be in a in a very controlled environment and, but you know we'll probably have an area that will that will rotate through about items that we have from the collection and we'll rot rotate those things through so people can see those but eventually we'd like to have those more in a museum in the Muskogee Nation Cultural Center and Museum and those will be housed in, in that manner but uh, we want to make sure that the council house is reflective of what, what the way it was in 1878 and that it's it's telling the story not the items that are not really associated with the council house being in there and telling the story. So there was two stories to be told. I think we just clarified the story for the council house and we'll let the collections tell their own story one day when we have our museum set. What about the other museums in this area? Now I've spoken with people both at Gilcrease mm -hmm. and at Philbrook and they have indicated a strong interest in interaction, uh, perhaps exhibiting some of the items in the collection. Uh, and also uh, James Pepper Henry, who's taken over the museum uh, project in Oklahoma City, right. has discussed uh, having some of those items there as a real part of a rotating display. So are you looking to those connections here with the, uh, with the art world locally? I think they are. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not over there. I don't do the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, Veronica uh, Pipe Sam is who is our uh, Cultural Center and Archives manager. She's definitely looking into those things. 
Uh, obviously, with Gilcrease, we have the, you know Thomas Gilcrease was a Creek citizen, and uh, actually, I think Jim Pepper Henry is part Creek as well. And so, we have a lot of connections around the state, and to be able to collaborate, and that's very important in the, in the museum area uh, or the museum, museum arena. But I think, you know, we're looking at some things, maybe uh, some buildings that maybe already in our um, purview, uh, I would say, and on our radar that may be looking at some long-term op options for creating our own cultural center. And then and once you have the space, then you can do the collaboration. And I think, um, you know, having traveling exhibits, whether we do a traveling exhibit from here to there or, you know, vice versa. But uh, th we're taking those steps now. And I think Veronica's done an excellent job creating that collection management policy, creating that uh, space at Riverwalk that's preserving the items and then collaborating, going to all the conferences, going to all the seminars, giving papers, giving uh, presentations on what's going on with Creek Nation. So we are we are at the table now. We're at the forefront of what's going on. Uh, we just don't have the, the structure itself to house our collection uh, from, a muse from a museum standpoint, but I think we've got some things coming down the pipe that uh, may may help, help with that. I think... The uh, just having our artwork out there for the public to see and see the variety and see the number of Creek artists there are, the Muskogee Creeks, and uh, there's a wide variety of art, and uh, a lot of them are traditional, traditional arts like the there's some mill patchwork, finger weaving, and. Um, we have some shell carving, some pottery, creek baskets, just a wide variety of, of items for sale here. And the good thing is, too, that they're really good with the, the commissions, not bad. It's better than most places, but, uh, and they're friendly. <laughs> they're nice, it's just local, right here by the council house so that uh, you know when you're when they get the council house finished and you're visiting that or downtown or anything you can come and uh, see the artwork and it's your own tribe too yes that's good because we've needed this for a while with a mainly creek or creek descendants art instead of um, you don't see a lot of turquoise or jewelry like that the um, one of the phrases you used to kind of uh, looked at the uh, the finance here it is a, an opportunity for you to make some sales and things like that uh, right now I know it's it's you know barely got the door open but do you think uh, this could be a, a, a good investment for you so to speak in in, in time and uh, whatever financial relations you work out with them. I think it'll be worth your, your time and make you some money? Yes, I, I believe so. Um, for some of us who don't have websites, it's really good because they can look on the Red Stick Gallery website and see your artwork and, and they will contact you. And uh, I think it's really good because there are a lot of artists out there I know there's another gallery in uh, Henrietta that handles only Indian artists, and there that is full and people coming all the time. But there's um, it's a little smaller shop, but it has a lot of items. How do you feel when uh, you've got this kind of uh, Muskogee presence here in the middle of Old Yeah. Uh, what do you think it tells the rest of the city here, you know, the non, our non-native neighbors here, and our, even our own people about, uh, you know, pride and culture and things like that? What, I guess, message do you think this might, uh, might be sharing? Well, this gallery holds a lot of history. I mean, it, in all the artwork, you can see the designs that were used in the southeastern Mississippian culture, and a lot of the techniques, the... Uh, like my finger woven sashes, the Creeks used finger woven uh, sashes for adornment and for utilitarian purposes. And like in mine, 
I like to just use the technique and you know be creative with it with the styles and make more contemporary things that so they know that the techniques can be used but they don't all have to be used for ceremonial purposes you can still uh, there are a lot of really nice lots of nice jewelry here not only beadwork but uh, like Kenneth Johnson's uh, silver work and I have some shell work and um, the items are contemporary and you can wear them every day and not have to think that uh, they're just for ceremonial purpose. And I think that a lot of the uh, city people, the people here in Okmulgee, might learn a lot about the creek. The uh, people do use for their ceremonial or the dances or the stickball games, things like that, that are just totally creek. But um, a lot of the things are anyone could wear, but they just have the, the native design. How did you feel when you found out that this was uh, part of the overall campaign to increase our presence here, uh, both economically and culturally in Omogi? I mean, did it make you feel good? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, a sense of pride, a uh, little bit of worry? Uh, how did it affect you? Well, I was excited about it because um, the Muskogee Arts Association has been working on uh, getting together a, a listing of all the Muskogee, Muskogee artists all across the country. And one of the things is that we could lead them, head them in the direction of this gallery. And um, so they can have an outlet for their work. They can learn more things, uh, learn more about the culture and uh, just get involved in the arts. And I think that the more people hear about this gallery, the more they'll want to uh, take part. And I think it is good because we've needed this for quite a while. I know I've taken part in the, some of the arts since I was in high school, I mean here at Oakdale first, we went down there and did weaving on the looms and uh, we've just taken part in a lot of the, our family does a lot of artists and so we've taken part in a lot of the uh, festivities and art shows and it's nice to have some place where you can just show your work and um, have people from all over the world come and see it and buy. But uh, I think that this will be good for Oak Mulgee and, you know, uh, I think the people will appreciate it, the, the Creek people and the non-Creeks alike. And it being down here in the historical part of the, of the uh, community by the council house, uh, that really means a lot. That was an audio portrait of uh, actually my cousin, Sandy Fife Wilson, and Chris Asbill, who was wearing several hats for me that day. Uh, we had a chance to talk to him about the brand new gallery down there. We're going to invite people to come down and check it out. It's pretty impressive, and we had a, had a nice time looking around, and uh, another resource for gifts, and I've got a I've got an anniversary coming up, so I may have to look at it pretty good. <laughs> it's at 105 South Grand. Uh, check it out, uh, normal business hours. And if you've got a question, you want to perhaps uh, exhibit and sell some of your stuff, you might want to give them a call down there, 758-5557. Okay, speaking of things artistic, uh, both Darren DeLon and George Alexander joined us here in the studio. He's going to talk, George is going to talk about his uh, latest work, and Darren's going to put him through his paces. So go do it, guys. Thanks a lot, Gary. How are you doing today, George? I'm doing pretty good, man. Okay, uh, George, uh, with, um, you know, a lot of people, like, in your, I mean, from what you told me, like, whenever we talked yesterday, mm -hmm. you've done a lot of things in uh, your 26 years of life. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, right now, you know, we're still, um, 
you know, there might be some people that do know, but um, uh, quite a bit of people probably don't. So could we just give me a little bit of background about you, like where you're from and like, you know, what got you into uh, being an artist? Yeah. Uh, well, originally I come from uh, Mason, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. For those of you that you don't know, that's around Okima. Um, I lost my parents when I was about 14. I moved to Sepulpa, or I moved to Tulsa with my sister Myra. And then uh, from there I graduated from Sepulpa High School. And then after that I uh, went to college at the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Fe, New Mexico. I mean, we always hear about that. I mean, a lot. Of, we get a lot of... Uh people talking about that constantly about that mm -hmm. place you know fortunately i have never been there gary have you been around there i've been outside oh. i've never gone inside but uh you know like my my cousin sandy went to school there and you yeah uh your cousin sandy was like right next to me at the red stick gallery I'll yeah, be done. yeah yeah yeah, was, yeah she's yeah, a great lady finger yeah. weavings and things like that yeah it's amazing and then you know the the top names in the business so to speak were also uh students at the institute and i think it sort of a, is the birthplace of the indian renaissance if yeah call it, it. it kind of is i mean and you have alan hauser fritz shoulder mm -hmm. oh biss tc cannon uh i think even dana tiger might have gone there once or twice and uh yeah i mean it's a, if you want to be an artist especially a contemporary native artist you really should go to school there mm -hmm. it's the only place in the world right now that that has a focus on native art yeah, I remember a lot, so much of the uh, art world was kind of traditional in the sense of uh, the usual kind of things that, you know, the, the warriors, the mm -hmm. horses and animals. And then all of a sudden uh, there was this change to a more abstract kind of thing. Yeah, that's... Just boom, it just blossomed. That kind of started with um, uh, Alan Hauser and uh, yeah. Leva, Flo uh, Leva New, or I, I forgot how to say his name, but... No word. Lord Kiva New, there it is. <laughs> You know, with um, with uh, George, I mean, with you here, I mean, uh, you uh, were telling me about there's a, <laughs> I, I'm still laughing at this, but, <laughs> but uh, there's a way that you started uh, when you were starting your drawing. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, your, yeah. Your, your artistry was in the, in the making. Uh, yeah. Can you tell our listeners about how that came to be? Well, you know, <laughs> when you're young and you're in church, there's not a whole lot of things <laughs> you can do. <laughs> and get away with it. And get away with it. So me and my buddy Sante, we uh, we used to draw on the church hymns. <laughs> we used to draw Dragon Ball Z characters, graffiti, all sorts of crazy things. Whatever popped in our head, that's pretty much what's in those hymnals. Yeah. You know, we're uh, we're gonna keep the name of that church out of it right oh, now. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, the, you know the, uh, the pastor and all the deacons <laughs> searching those Baptist hymnals right now that they listen. Well, to they're probably worth money now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and. Uh, from that point on, I mean, you know, I mean, you took to that creativity, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it started off with the Dragon Ball Z character, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. went to uh, other areas, too, uh, that you wanted to um, yeah. explore. Yeah, uh, you know, as you get older, your your uh, interests kind of change, and so uh, we were already kind of, like, coming up with tag names, because, I mean, you grow up with um, music, and hip-hop was like a big influential uh, part of where our artistic endeavors kind of went. And so w along with hip-hop, you you kind of have this uh, graffiti culture that kind of goes with it. And so we we would tag and uh, write on walls, do things that you're not supposed to do. So any kids listening, don't do that. <laughs> uh, and then eventually, uh, as I, w I was going through high school, people would ask me to write their names for them. And, dude, you know, they would want it in, like, calligraphy or Old English or anything like that. And so that kind of got me interested in tattooing. About that same time, uh, L.A. Inc., that mm -hmm. TV show on TLC, yeah. it came out. And so I was like, you know what? Why don't I try tattooing? Mm -hmm. So uh, at that point in time, I wanted to be a tattoo artist. Even all the way up to... Um, to I, I, I wanted to be a tattoo artist, but then the more that I started to paint, the more that I really kind of gravitated toward that medium. With, um, is there a certain like a, a theme, uh, a type of painting style that you do whenever mm. you uh, yeah. make your uh, murals, your portraits? You know well, I, uh, I kind of drive back to uh, my graffiti days and my tagging days where like when you tag, you just kind of 
do it really quick and like you know you write it as perfectly as possible but you see these drips kind of happen whenever that happens and so for whatever reason those drips kind of stuck in my head and so I would like uh, as I would do figurative work I would see my drips kind of happen and so I kind of kept that in there because it created a really cool look so a lot of my street art aesthetic kind of comes through my my work these days okay uh with uh, let's uh, fast forward a couple of years you know uh -huh. you're you're down at the institute of american art mm -hmm. uh did i say that correctly yeah okay. institute of american indian arts Ma yeah. american indian arts correct yeah. forgive me uh you know we are, we're done with that but now recently i mean uh, you're doing um a mural mm -hmm. uh here in uh Creek Nation country yeah. uh, in Eufaula. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? What got that started? Yeah, well, uh, I had pu put out a post on Facebook asking if anybody would let me do a mural. Mm -hmm. And a lady by the name of Charlene Colbert had contacted me and said that the Eufaula Indian community would more than happy to have uh, a mural there. And so I asked them if there was any kind of theme that they wanted me to focus on and they said you can do anything as long as it focuses on the trail of tears mm -hmm. and so i said okay I can, I can do that and i didn't want to focus on um anything like on the sullen part of the trail of tears because i mean we've already seen that we've already known what we've endured so i really wanted to focus on what gave them the strength to uh go on such a journey with um in the weather that they had to with the clothing that they had with uh, next to nothing mm -hmm. really and to me what really struck me as what could be a strength was uh, thinking about the future generations so right now I'm painting this lady who uh, who can't continue on the journey no more and she has a baby and she's given this baby to uh, this lady who is from today's times you know she's wearing uh, a little res hat, she's got on a denim jacket, she has sneakers on, you know, and uh, that's a sim symbolic, it's symbolic because it's, uh, it's from today and then this lady from the past, and she's handing off this baby to her. This baby is representation of uh, our culture and uh, for next generations to come and how it's our turn now to carry on this legacy of being resilient. Now with, uh, you know, they gave, they gave you the theme, you know, mm -hmm. how, uh, did you have like numerous like ideas like just come to your head or did you like, when did you think that that was this, okay, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do and like, was there like second thoughts, third thoughts, fourth thoughts? No, no, well, usually that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, but for this particular idea, I've, I've kind of wanted to do this idea for a really long time. I just didn't have the space to, to do it at. Or, or the right place, mm -hmm. and so whenever Eufaula had asked me to do it, I I knew exactly this was the the idea that I wanted to go with. All right, you know now recently, I mean, you just um, there's another thing, another significant thing in George <laughs> Alexander's uh, life that just happened, and um, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I uh, recently just got accepted into a master's program in uh, Florence, Italy. Uh, at the Student Art College International, or Saatchi for short. Um, my mentor had gone there, um, and he had asked me to apply. Mm -hmm. And so I filled out the application. He paid for the application fee, and I thought I was going to wait for a really long time before I heard back, but a couple weeks or so, I uh, got an interview with somebody. And then the interview took like it only took like 10 minutes but then because of the connection it took like an hour so i'm <laughs> thinking there's no way that i'm going to get in mm -hmm. because this interview sucks <laughs> <laughs> but uh he tells me that the interview went good and went on to the third committee and then the third committee approved and so i'm going that's uh, pretty amazing to hear because we hear i mean i was doing my little uh, look up on that i mean it's very prestigious i yeah. mean above all else i mean that is what they call it? It's, it's the Renaissance. It's, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like the um, the I, I, it's I the like birth. I, I, yeah. yeah, the birth, the Mecca. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's the Mecca. It's, it really is. Uh, Florence is an interesting town because it's sort of like a melting pot for for very many different cultures. So uh, that had a big play on uh, the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, what the Renaissance basically is, and the reason why I want to go there is because they were capable of taking out um, 
a certain subject material while keeping it in there by focusing just on human beings. Mm -hmm. And with my paintings, I focus on the philosophy of egalitarianism, which is basically what that means is, is that we're all human and that we're the ones that kind of put these labels upon ourselves. Like, uh, you know, we're the ones that call people white. We're the ones that call people black. Uh, we call ourselves Native Americans. But really, we, we really, our, our culture are those things. But we are, are and as a, as a person, as a, a thing, we're human beings. And uh, if, if we were to kind of break down those barriers, then I feel that we can share our culture more easily. And by sharing cultures, you can mix things together and make things... Um, more interesting mm -hmm. and you know if we if we stop labeling ourselves the universe isn't going to stop working you know uh, I use the astronaut as a symbol for that and when the astronaut looks at the earth he sees no border he sees no religion he sees no government he doesn't see any of that he just sees the earth and uh, that's what we are we're all one thing and whenever he looks behind him the, the astronaut he sees the universe and it puts in the perspective of how tiny our problems here on Earth really are. You know, we're fighting amongst ourselves when really we should be working together. Exactly. I know a lot of people will be agreeing with what you're saying. Uh, with, um, how, um, I guess, uh, now the next thing to get going on is like what? Student visa? I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, man. And that's that's that, visa. Is that, is that, that is a huge headache. <laughs> but don't don't let that stop you. It's just a headache. You know, you can continue. Take some Tylenol. You'll be all right. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to get so many forms together. You know, uh, you got to have, and not only do you have to have these forms, but you have to have a certain amount of money already in your bank account before you can even go because you can't have a job over there mm -hmm. unless you get a work visa and uh, that's like another headache that you got to deal with but they if you're getting your student visa I don't think you can even get a work visa um, the only way that you can get a job is through um, whatever it is that you're studying under mm -hmm. so me being a painter uh, I'm gonna try to find a loophole <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can I can get internships and stuff to to help with that, but um, that's been the biggest headache. And then you know, don't ever lose your birth certificate because yeah. that is a hassle too. Don't ever lose your social security card because that's a hassle too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all that's going to be starting up here pretty quick. I mean, uh, chances are, I mean, I'm not sure how semesters go like over mm -hmm. in Italy, but yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're kind of similar to here. You know, uh, well, the school itself is uh, accredited through uh, an American university, so it's going to be very similar to how we go to school here. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe they do semester to semester rather than a trimester. Uh, and I start school September 1st, mm -hmm. so it's coming up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. With... Um, now with, uh, let's go back to your, uh, kind of like your murals and everything. Okay. You were talking about how uh, with uh, like the, the, the drips and everything from your mm -hmm. paint, how mm -hmm. it goes pretty fast and uh, how you move, like you get down yeah. with all of your stuff. With this mural, like is that taking a while to get finished or is it, that? It's taking a little longer than I thought, but oh, okay. uh, it shouldn't be no problem. Uh, I like to stay busy anyway, because mm -hmm. if I, if, you know, Idle, what is that saying? Like idle hands lead to the devil's time or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, you know, I don't. I need to stay busy, pretty much. <laughs> so, I mean, how long have you been doing this mural now? I mean, the one that's going on in your Oh, uh, it's tomorrow. I'll be on a week, but what's keeping me is uh, I I have to keep coming back up here, which is not a problem. You know, it gives me a break, and I need those breaks. Um, like, for instance, I was at the uh, the Red Stick Gallery. Mm -hmm. I was very honored that they had asked me to do something there. And uh, now I'm doing this interview, and tomorrow, or tonight I have a, uh, a sewing class, and I'm not going to miss my sewing class. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, that just kind of rolls into my next question. I uh -huh. mean, I know you're talking about painting, you're uh, tagging, being a tattoo mm -hmm. artist, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, Dragon Ball Z. And now sewing? I mean, sewing, is there, yeah. Is, there like a, is it just to broaden the mind? Or? Yeah, well, you know, uh, if I... I guess you'd say I have ADD when it comes to artistic endeavors. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I gotta do different things mm -hmm. pretty much because, like, if I continue, if I just paint, 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 and paint, and paint, 
I'll get really bored and then I don't want to pay no more. Mm-hmm. So, you know, doing other things kind of ease up the um, the boredness, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I understand that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard you're a flamingo dancer, boxer, <laughs> and now you're a DJ. Bachata, <laughs> bachata. Bachata, sorry, bachata, sorry. You know, <laughs> that flamingo stuff, that's a little too much. <laughs> a little too fast. Uh, with, um, now, with, of course, you know, like you're saying, uh, with your student visa, you got to have, like, a certain mm-hmm. money in the account. Are there uh, any things that you're doing right now to get, like, um, oh, yeah. everything raised up, uh, money saved up? Yeah. Uh, well, J- uh, July 1st, I'll be having an uh, uh, Indian taco dinner along with an auction of some of my work, and I'll be doing a live paint, um, which is, I believe that's a Saturday, July 1st, and it's going to start at 4 o'clock. Um, we're going to do that and try to raise up a little bit of funds uh, to, to help me kind of ease the, the, um, the, the cost that it's going to take to get over there. And then I also have uh, August 19th through the 21st will be um, the Santa Fe India Market. Mm-hmm. And so I got a booth there. And I also have a show at the Ellsworth Gallery and that's pretty much it for now. Now, when you say live art, now, well, first off, uh, we, uh, that's going to be July 1st at 4 p.m. Where's it going to be at? At the, uh, at the uh, Tulsa Creek Community Center, I think that's okay. what it's called. Yeah. Okay, we, we all know where that's at. We'll be okay, able to great, get that address. Uh, when you say live art, mm-hmm. um, like, is there anything in your mind that's going to be painting then, or is it like going to be like a suggestion from the audience? Or no, the- I usually have an idea that um, I'll go with. I try to keep it where it kind of ties into wherever I'm at, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, for instance, uh, we, I did a live paint for the, um, we like to call ourselves the Green Chili Creeks, and it's a bunch of uh, creeks that live in the uh, southwestern area. Mm-hmm. And so we have an at-large meeting once a year. Mm-hmm. And so for that piece, I did a Chitto Harjo. And so, uh, you know, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Now, with this master's program that you're going to be going to over in Florence, mm-hmm. uh, how long is that program, how long does that program last? Well, it lasts for two years, and I'm going to try to stick it out up there for the entire two years. I, I don't know how the student visa thing works. I don't know if I have to keep coming back and then go back or, or what. But if I can stick it out for the whole two years, that's what I'll do. And with uh, what are you, um, I guess, the overall goal i mean with this master's program with you being an mm-hmm. artist what what is it that you're wanting to or try to obtain well uh i kind of use my art as a way to use my voice mm-hmm. and whatever my voice is saying at that particular time in my life that's what i'll portray uh eventually you know i wouldn't mind teachings at some point or having a, uh, a little mentee under me uh, to carry on the, the idea of art. I don't think a lot of people believe that art is dying and it's, it's not. It's, it's evolving and changing but you have these traditional mediums that will stick with us for the dawn of time and painting is one of them. But we've been painting since uh, we lived in a cave. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, whenever you, that first man put his handprint on the wall uh, that was a painting, you know. And uh, same thing with music. Music's been with us forever, and so that's why we're so interested and so engaged with these things, is because it's who we are. All right, we're coming towards the end. I mean, this is something we could talk about for uh, oh, you, a long time. You a long time. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? I mean, I want to remind everyone that he's going to do, be doing a live art and a kind of like an auction. Uh, July 1st at 4 p.m. at the Tulsa Creek Indian Community. Mm -hmm. Uh, You said there's something going on on August 19th and 21st. We'll be back in Santa Fe. Yeah, the Santa Fe Indian Market. So if you're around in Santa Fe at that particular time, come by to my booth and say hi. I wish I knew the booth number, but I don't. (laughs) Well, uh, tell you what, George, I want to thank you very much for uh, being on here. I mean, I know it's such a short notice. Short notice, but I mean, you got on here, and uh, yeah. it was a great talk. Yeah. I want to thank you again. Yeah, uh, big shout out to the uh, Ufala Community Center for letting me do the um, the mural. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and it's going to look uh, pretty great. I mean, from what I saw of it, I mean, it looks amazing right now. So yeah, we're waiting for the completed product. It's thank you. It's going to look awesome. So. Thank you. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you again, George. Uh, let's go get started with the uh, awesome and uh, long looks like. Uh, 
Muskogee Creek Nation announcements. Uh, I'll go ahead and get it going, uh, Gary. Uh, let's see. The first one is the Cultural Expressions Day Camp. Uh, it'll be uh, July 17th to the 21st. We already had two of them that uh, they already done, but this one, the 17th and 21st, will be at Glenpool Indian Community, 13839 South Casper Street in Glenpool. Uh, for more information, contact 918-549-2557. If you've um, taken a look at the Muskogee uh, uh, Nation News website lately, you've noticed a, a new story looking at language and how that uh, our people can be losing that language and if we don't do something, well, that's what we're, where we're headed. Well, the language department has actually offered another tool in the tool chest for preserving language. They actually have the Muskogee language app available for the iPad, iPhone, and Android devices. It's um, got 27 categories and more than 500 Muskogee entries and a lot of other great information. So if you're interested, you might want to get a hold of those folks or look it up yourself and download it to your appropriate um, device there. So it's the Muskogee Language app available for iPad, iPhone, and Android. Uh, we got the UT Tribe Bingo Fundraiser, Kellyville Indian Community in Kellyville, Oklahoma, June 9th. Uh, Concession begins at 6.30. Bingo begins at 7.30. They'll be raffling in 50-50. For more information, contact 918-269-1675 or 918-984-7744, and donations are appreciated. Okay, we've got the festival coming up, and one of the big elements of that festival is the downtown parade. And if you've uh, paid attention to the parade in the last couple of years, you've noticed the uh, Muscogee Creek Nation Marching Band. The pride of the Muscogee Nation is uh, recruiting band members still. Age does not matter as long as you can play an instrument and have had experience in a marching band. So if you're interested in that, you want to get a hold of Melinda Deeringwater, 918-549-2522. And uh, they're also seeking entries for the parade to be held in downtown Okmulgee. That's on Saturday, June 24th. Call the same number you're interested in marching in the parade or the marching band. Uh, question, will Gary Fife break out the Star Wars to march in the parade again? No. Mind, one of those. Sadly, <laughs> Gary Fife has, has actually sold those uniforms. Oh, no. Yeah, well, no I got to admit, during, during the festival parade, that was like the hottest thing you could wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they says snow trooper, but you don't feel the cold. No, no, not see. at all. Uh, Next up, uh, the Earth Day event uh, has been rescheduled for June 16th since the original date was canceled due to rain. So on June 16th, our registration will begin at 12 p.m. at the College of Muskogee Creek Nation, followed by the cleanup. Uh, for more information on that, contact Justina Grayson at 918-549-2580. And here's a salute to our uh, wonderful youth. Uh, the Muskogee Nation Youth Services Program will hold the Muskogee Youth Awards Banquet on Tuesday, June 20th at the Muskogee Dome. It'll celebrate the, uh, the uh, youth visionaries, the men, men, don't even try, Gary. Uh, <laughs> youth visionaries, and let's just leave it at that. Uh, and those who, uh, old who helped the young award rep uh, recipients can't even get that one out. Okay, tickets are on sale for ten bucks, <laughs> and can be purchased at the youth office uh, downtown here or at the door. Give them a call 918-549-2557. All right, our last well, the last one for me. Uh, 11th annual youth wellness camp. Uh, this year's theme is choose happy. Participants must be eight to fourteen, and you need your own transportation to and from the camp. They've already had two wellness day camps. Uh, but the next one will be June 27th to the 29th, Wetumpka Indian Community Center, 608 North Creek in Wetumpka. Uh, see, for more information on that, I'm looking for a phone number. I'm going to say 918-758-1910. Thank you. Okay, real quick, we got to get out. Uh, 303 basketball tournament Saturday, June the 17th. Get a hold of Tourism and Rick. This is Gary Fife, uh, Joe Jeff Kados. Darren Delon, Joe Jeff Kados. We'll say Mado, Mabo Hedgeskut. You've been listening to Muskogee Radio. 
Join us again next week for more local, tribal, and community news and updates. Mid-Oak.